By now, in this series about programming an adventure game in Java, you should know how to create room objects and put them into a map. But how does the player move from one room to another? Well, that's what we need to start working on now. And of course, the first thing I need to do is to create a player object. For that, I create the actor class. Now, this is quite simple. Just like the room class, it descends from the thing class, which has a name and a description. So when the game starts here over here, you can see that I create the player and I set the player's position to the first room. That's room zero in the map. Now, in the first lesson in this series, I explained how the game gets user input. Uh, the commands to move north, south, west, or east are the letters N, S, W, and D. So those letters have been added to the list of recognized commands. If a single word or letter is entered by the user, it's ass assumed to be a verb, like take or drop. Well, the commands N, S, W, and E are also treated as verbs because they're really a shorthand way of saying go north, go south, and so on. Now, down here, when the pass command... Where is it all the way down here? When the pass command method uh, runs and it finds a one-word command, it passes it as the word list, that's the list of strings, entered by the user to the process verb method. Let's go up here. So here's the process verb method. Well, there is only one word in the list, so it gets that word. Again, I use get zero to index to the first item. And then it uses this switch case statement to call an appropriate method to move the player in whatever is the specified direction. Now, the actual moving is done by the move player to method. Uh, so you can see that's up here. Uh, where is it? Move player to. Okay, so it's done by this method, and I pass this a direction constant. Direction. Uh, and you may remember from the last lesson that that's uh, this, that's this uh, enum. Now, move player to simply calls move to, that's this method up here. Uh, passing the player and the direction as arguments. Incidentally, you may wonder why I don't just call move to directly. Well, that's because, in principle, a game might have more than one actor object. An actor object is any interactive character, a character that can move around the map, picking up objects and so on. The player is the only actor object so far, but I could add more later. I could have actual characters moving around the game. And move to will move any actor object, not just the player. Anyway, here it moves the player by finding the current room. That's uh, an actor dot get room. Then it gets the value of its north, south, west, or east variable. Now, the variable exit is an integer. It's the number indicating an index into the map, into the map collection, which, remember, we talked about previously. So... If we try to go north from the current room and the value of the n variable, which is a field in the room object, let's have a quick look at rooms, you can see that. So if, uh, if we try to go north and, and the value of the n variable, if that's 1, that shows that the room at index 1 in the map is the room at the north exit of the current room. Okay, so let's turn back to the move to method. So that's how that works. So I use map dot get uh, with exit as an argument to index into the map and get the room at index one. Then I assign that as the actor's current room. Now you may need to look again at the def definition of the room class and the way rooms have been added to the map. So remember they're added up here. Um, so you may need to look at those again uh, using the, the source code download. Um, to see, understand exactly how they work. In fact, it is fairly straightforward. Now, at the end of all that, the new room number is returned to the uh, update output method. Let me see if I can find update output. That's this method here. And if it's minus one, which is the value of direction dot no exit, then it knows that the player hasn't been able to move in that direction and it displays the string no exit. Otherwise, it gets the current room 
and um, displays its name and description. So let me run this and see how this actually works. Okay, so here I'm running it in the NetBeans console, the Doctor console, but you could equally run it from a system prompt. So to remind you, this is the this is a represent a representation of the map I've created, the four rooms in my game, and how they're linked together. So I start in the troll room, and I try to go north by entering N, no exit, try to go west, no exit, east, ah, I'm in the forest. Uh, go back west, back in the troll room, south, cave, east, dungeon, and so on. Let me just enter quit, Q to quit the game. So, there you have it. There's the, the map of four rooms, and of course you can add on any number of rooms in a, in a real game. Now, in the next lesson, I'll explain how this game, so far, is structured with its classes and packages. And then we'll start work on adding some treasures. Download the source code for these lessons from bitwisebooks.com. This Java series is based on the C-sharp programs that form the basis of the little book of adventure game programming available from Amazon.